Hey everyone, I'm your host Lanise and welcome to Soulful. This is a space that'll help you unfold the tools within you to align with your highest self through shared experience. Because at the end of this journey, unique to oneself, we are all interconnected. We are one. All right, today I have with me singer, songwriter, producer, and model, McLeod. Thank you so much for being here with me today. My pleasure. I am so excited to dive deeper into who McLeod is. Mm. So where do we start? I mean, I don't even know how I found you. <laughs> I, I don't. <laughs> I don't either. I was gonna say, didn't um, didn't we first? I feel like maybe you followed my ex girlfriend. Oh yes. And and a lot of people ended up following both of us. We were a little. We were a bit of an IG couple. Yes. Um. <laughs> That's right. I followed your ex girlfriend originally because she went to the same doctor that I went to. Yes. For my nose. Yes. Yes, then, I remember that. That's great. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I thought, I was like trying to think. I'm like, I don't even know how we ended up meeting, but it yeah, had dawned was, on me on my way over here that it was definitely, <laughs> it was definitely her. That's how we met. Yeah, mm-hmm. I saw you guys were coupled up, and then I went on your thing, and I'm like, oh my God, he has a band. Yeah. So, he looks so cool. Follow. <laughs> yeah, that was, that's so funny. That was a, a while ago, too. That was like, years ago. Yeah, like two, almost three years ago, probably. Yeah, and ever since that, it's like, you just have such a welcoming vibe and it's um always been really cool to like talk to you because you share so much of yourself true on social media so you make it very easy for people to like you or feel connected with you and i really appreciated that about you so thank you yeah of course yeah thank you for (laughs) saying that i definitely try to um do that i remember um Growing up, like, kids would, like, be obsessed with some band or whatever, some emo band, and they'd be like, um, oh, my God, like, the, the guy responded. <laughs> like, my, I just saw, like, that when people saw um, their their heroes or celebrities that they like or whatever, that they always appreciated when they saw interaction or they acted like real people towards them. So I always felt like I should interact with my audience in a real way. In a real way, I love yeah. that. It is definitely very personable, and it makes everybody, me specifically, see you as like a person. You right. Know? Yeah. You're not anything like fake. I'm just like this guy's real. Yeah. You know, he's just genuinely himself. Good. I'm glad that <laughs> I'm glad that comes through. Yeah. So, um, tell me, how did it all start for you? Where did you first begin with with music? Um, well, with music, I've been doing that since, um, I was like 12. I started playing guitar and I kind of, I felt like I sucked at it. Mm, Um, like I I really was like, uh, all my other friends had been playing for like maybe like two plus years. Um, and so they all seemed really good and I just wasn't like able to do very much. So. Um, and I was also learning it in school, so we were learning classical style, you know, uh-huh, like, right, yeah. you know, finger picking and like kind of the basics. Right. And, um, I was like, I kind of just want to like learn this so I can like be a rock star. And <laughs> so I, after I stopped taking the class, I started just teaching myself like Blink-182 covers, um, like Fall Out Boy songs and just like kind of figuring out how songs were like structured and worked and how the chords and notes all uh, interacted with each other Um, and once I kind of learned a few covers I just immediately jumped into writing my own songs because that was kind of the the goal in the first place Um, okay so you already knew you wanted to be yeah I'd hear songs take it somewhere right yeah I'd hear songs that I would be like that like it hit me a certain way and I'm like I want to do that to other people (laughs) you know love that Um, for people yeah I I want like someone to uh, you know, be transported somewhere by hearing it or um, relate to it. Be like, ah, oh, you know, same <laughs> when they hear a, a song lyric or um, or even just have it caught in their head and they're like, I don't know why, but this song is like my favorite song. I love hearing it, you know, right. any anything like that that I could produce of my own. I just really wanted to. So that was kind of the goal behind playing guitar. Nice. And then um, started playing in like a church band 
cool as that's well. A, that's a, oh, the very popular place to start. Very much so. Yeah. yeah, you get on stage once a week, and most of the people in there are like kind of also classically trained musicians. So okay. you you learn a lot from them. And then I would I started picking up bass sometimes in that band, and every now and then drums. Wow. Um, or like keys and stuff and I would do definitely like uh, singing sometimes with it too um, wow so so once I kind of knew how to play all these instruments I was like well I can just make songs and you know record myself I, I was in bands and stuff in high school but mm-hmm. like they always fizzled out and it was always me that was doing all the work and that was the most mm-hmm. dedicated so I was like screw that I'm just gonna learn all the instruments do it myself wow and then um yeah, so I was on that road for a long time. I was also out on the East Coast. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm originally from um, here, like down in Laguna. Okay. But uh, or up in Laguna, we're in. We're yeah, in I know. Yeah, we're, we're in San Diego. <laughs> That's Diego north now. from here. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, like Laguna Beach, like you know, upbringing, and then I went to high school and out just outside of DC, and oh. then. Um, so that was kind of where I had my musical beginnings, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, and as soon as I moved back out here, probably within like a few months, um, I ended up starting my band, which was called Clouseau at the time and is currently nameless. But <laughs> currently nameless. Yeah, is we're that trying to the name rebrand. Of the band? Okay. No, maybe I like it should that. be. Like, I like that. <laughs> and we've been trying to decide on a name um, for a long time. Okay. It has not been going well (laughs) now is that because there's so many different like minds and opinions here i mean or is it a matter of like what feels right for us yeah a little bit of both okay and it'll be like i think we just our last band name was spelled very weird and that's very true i remember the first time i was like trying to look it up and i was like wait how do I spell it? Yeah, exactly. people will like read it and they don't know how to say it, yeah. or they'll know how to say it but they don't know how to spell it. Um, right. So it made it difficult for people to like follow us, keep up with us, look mm-hmm. up our music, mm-hmm. um, unless it was like spelled out somewhere on the stage while we were playing. Right. Um, so we kind of want to like keep it simple, something where like the minute we say it, someone knows exactly what to yeah. type in. Mm-hmm. I love that. Yeah. Um, Ask the universe for that. For sure. Speak it into existence. Like I don't know. What the name is, just guide me, you know? Exactly. And sometimes it just pops up. Yeah, and it may have. I'm just waiting on my bass player to like decide how he feels about it. There you go. <laughs> it's pretty much just us in the band now. So how many? Two. Whoa, okay. I mean, we, we do have a, a drummer, but she did just have a baby. Oh, that will, that's a life changer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like I think <laughs> I think she'd still be there, you know, if and when she can. Absolutely. But at the end of the day, it's it's feeling like it's pretty much the me and Ricky show. Definitely, cuz the prioritization changes definitely as a parent. Of course, yeah. yeah. Um well, respect to her. Definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's a very cute little tiny baby. I've seen it on Instagram. (laughs) (laughs) Very cute. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, so it's just us and we live together in Anaheim and we just, the studio's in my room. We literally share a bathroom. So like we just walk into my room and work on stuff. That's great because you always have like that opportunity for practice. We're always there. The second Ricky comes up with like a cool bass line, he'll just run into my room and be like, can we record this really quick? And even if we don't go back to it for weeks, you know, we'll just have the idea there and we can mess with it later in the studio. Cool. So like, do you ever get like roadblocks? Do you ever kind of feel stuck with your creativity? And yeah. like, what do you do when that happens? All the time. Um, and, you know, like, sometimes I'll push through it, I guess. Sometimes I won't know what to do mm-hmm. with a song, and I'll just force myself to keep trying and trying and trying. And sometimes it makes me, like, hate the song, like, or I just don't want to even finish it. But, um, but it will yield results. And sometimes maybe it, whatever I come up with isn't even that song anymore. Maybe tiring myself out on that song leads to me writing a song that I'm way more stoked on, and unfortunately, the first song doesn't maybe ever see the light of day, but I still get something out. Yeah, 
Um, I also, too, love, like, I see you sometimes on your stories, and, like, you're just freestyling. Like, you mm -hmm. do a guitar, and you don't even know what you're saying, <laughs> and it's so silly, and I feel, like, freeing, you know? Like, I can see, like, some freedom there with yourself, like, maybe you are kind of breaking up, you know, whatever blocks you may have by just, like, yeah. letting it rip. True. Yeah. The f <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying. Definitely. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, just making it fun or not stressful. Um, you can get really, like, down on yourself for not accomplishing something. So if you mm -hmm. set out to, like, f write a song or, um, or even record a song. Sometimes I have the full song... <laughs> visualized I know what the whole thing is but like I'm just not happy with how I sound in the recordings or I'm not it's satisfied with the mix in the head yeah it's not matching what I'm going for and that can be extremely frustrating so making light of it you know um having fun doing other music or you know doing the same thing but just not the same song or whatever can definitely break up the monotony and maybe even like you were saying like kind of get the creative thing going there's times where like i'll be working on a song for months and then all of a sudden i'm like that's it that's how it goes there you go it's um, kind of cleared like your thoughts yeah getting it all out kind of clears everything mm -hmm. and it just comes to you life changes that's a life thing changes. too sometimes um i'll be you know the song's almost done um there's just one thing that i can't figure out how to like what it needs and then um or, or lyrics, you know, I'll be like, I have like a melody idea, but I don't know what this song should be about. Mm. Um, and then something will come up that puts a line in my head, like one catchy line that like rhymes and sounds good. And I'm like, ooh, and then that just starts like a whole just snowball effect of finishing the, the song. So, wow. I yeah. Like so, so sometimes I just have to wait for life to happen. Exactly. Yeah. So, like, what kind of um, experiences? Um, in your opinion have helped you the most what are the most powerful experience you've been through that helps with your lyrics definitely um, like pain like heartbreak heartache um, I feel that that's usually what like some of the most relatable unfortunately mm -hmm. some of the most relatable um, and even just like like some of the things that make the most sense uh, upon like first hearing it to people in such a relatable way is like some of the the darker things that probably most people uh, maybe don't want to talk about um, don't want to share right they wouldn't want to necessarily talk about their own but they definitely know the feeling or they kind of feel a pressure to appear happier than they are um, by society right and just in life not like in music necessarily most people use music to express those emotions that they don't want to bring up at a party or Absolutely. something Absolutely. Um, but at the same time there's a good chance that at that party they're listening to music written by someone that was very sad um, that's so true yeah like how many times are people listening to like Billie Eilish somewhere or whatever while they're all <laughs> chill and having a good time she did not win an Emmy for nothing no yeah exactly <laughs> or is it Grammy a Grammy <laughs> uh, oh yeah or Grammy it, yeah Grammy's music <laughs> <laughs> but no yeah exactly it's like most of the most popular stuff is um, about like going through pain and I think like there's maybe like a disconnect like people aren't quite like they don't get it yet that like what they're so drawn to is that relatability mm -hmm. it's like um, a subconscious mm -hmm. level right of attraction right because you'll be dancing to a beat someone being like you don't love me anymore or something and then they're like yeah oh my god i feel this but it's like you get like what's happening here like yeah. someone <laughs> is expressing that they're sad and you relate to that but that fun. feeling of being able to relate to someone that you look up to yeah. in such a way is so powerful that you're happy to hear it that's great it's very um admirable that you at a, even at a young age um felt that desire to step out of that group and be a leader by by yeah. making music i guess so that takes a lot i think it was shallow why i first wanted to be in music though <laughs> okay like, i love the honesty <laughs> when i was a kid i definitely was like i think i saw some movie i probably watched like 
Back to the Future or something. No, uh, I think I saw like a music video uh-huh. of some rock band playing and the crowd like screaming and freaking out at what they were doing. And I was like, wow, I want to make people freak out like that. Like <laughs> whatever they're doing, it's super impressive. And I want some of that. And um, yeah, it, it was literally just based off of like seeing people react to these people playing music. And then wow. that was probably when I was like six or seven or something. Wow. And then I didn't actually start doing it until I was like 12 and by the time and by that time I was like actually listening to a lot of like music that was like my own taste and and that I related to and stuff so then I kind of was like yeah I want to also make relatable music like this that's great (laughs) it sounds like you had a lot of like um freedom too as a kid like you like your parents do your parents raise you yeah like your parents really didn't like um did they give you some type of like direction or did they give you that leeway to kind of like form your own identity because for me I was so shy growing up I was just kind of like like what do I do like I was always looking at my parents like how do I live you know like Mm. what kind of things should I like and it just sounds like you you I never wanted to be like my parents at all so I'd never really asked them for and for the so most part they didn't really at a young age. get me like that yeah I kind of did I kind of um became whatever whatever I am now I kind of became it uh, despite my parents I think huh. they wanted me to be um like I don't know if I was like a straight A student that went to college and became like a lawyer or an accountant or like, like anything right. they would have been uh like, all on board. Yep, you're good. Um, but instead, I wanted to <laughs> play music and draw pictures and you're an artist, right? And and like meet people and connect with people. And um, they were very like strict and they didn't want me to like go out and stuff. So most of most of my younger experiences and the things that I learned or became were all due to me like sneaking out or like mm-hmm. kind of doing it. But Being like a rebel. Yeah, like, okay, I wasn't allowed to play music after 8 o'clock when I was in high school. Um, And I also wasn't allowed to do it before working on homework. Okay. If I'm being completely honest, I never worked on homework. (laughs) But I had to at least pretend I was working on homework. You're like, I just need to stay here for 30 minutes. (laughs) Yeah, so I would sit in my room, like, writing lyrics quietly, but, like, Ah. in my school book, you know, so that in case someone walked in, I could be like, oh, just doing math homework. And then... I would, <laughs> and then I would uh, go down for like dinner and be like, oh, almost done with my homework, go out for another 15 minutes, and then I'd play music for maybe an hour and a half or whatever I had. Um, and sometimes I wouldn't even be able to get away with that, like sometimes I just wouldn't be able to do it. And um, so yeah, like I, it's kind of crazy that I even managed to ever learn how to write songs or play instruments because... Um, it was not... You had to be sneaky about it. Available to me, yeah. It sounds like that kind of fueled you a little bit. Like, knowing that you couldn't do it, maybe you (laughs) want to do it more. A little bit, yeah. (laughs) Probably. And also, I mean, I I just, I already knew I wanted to do it, and I didn't really care that they didn't, uh, like, get it, or, like, didn't see that I wanted to do it. Like, I was like, I'm alive right now. I'm not gonna, you know, I'm like a kid right now. Yeah. I'm young, like, why would I just sit around doing whatever you guys want me to do? Wow. <laughs> you know? I love that. So yeah. at such a young age, you were like asking these questions, giving that pushback, which <laughs> yeah. as a parent can be annoying <laughs> as well. Totally. Fuck. The but minute I mean, your kid learns how to say no, it's like, oh man. <laughs> like, yeah. But, but in doing that, like, look at how true you are to yourself now as an adult. Right. I can only imagine if I did everything that they wanted me to do, what kind of miserable schmuck I'd be now. How confused you would be. Like, okay, let's say you did everything they expected of you. You have your freaking degree in something you hate, and you're like, why do I hate my life? Right. You know? Yeah. I feel like there's so many I saw people that like coming that. a mile away. I kind of saw it in them. Like, they didn't... Okay seems super happy like they I mean they were happy enough they're making their way Mm -hmm. but it's like I'm you know maybe they didn't want anything different like they were just like whatever's the best I can get is what I'll take but I want something very specific and you know I figured no matter what I'm gonna die at the end so I might as well take the chance on what I want 
Um, How old were you when safe. you were thinking about these things like that? Like, I guess like 14, 15, <gasps> like probably, yeah. Wow, I like that. It's very well, that was viable. when I kind of started getting more serious about it. I started like right. recording myself and like teaching myself how to produce and um, yeah, it was, yeah, it was kind of like middle of high school, I guess. Wow. When I was like, nope, I can either choose to let someone else pick what my life is like for me right. or I can just Go do my own whatever way it is I'm trying it to do. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah, dude. I support that for sure because yeah, you, I'm sure a lot of people look up to you, your fans. Hopefully and now so. Now can see like a deeper version, you know, a deeper version of you and where it all comes from. Yeah. Yeah, I get, like, messages on Instagram sometimes Mm -hmm. from, (laughs) like, one kid was like, oh, like, people make fun of the fact that I wear all black and paint my nails, like, in high school, or, like, you know, they're, like, a freshman in high school or something, and I'm like, adults don't care, (laughs) like, you're gonna be okay, kids are stupid, like, you know, (laughs) it, uh... Dude, that's so like that cool sucks, that you're that person for for kids. Yeah, because, I don't know, I mean, I didn't really have anyone tell me that, but I saw it, like, I'd see music videos and be like, <laughs> they're doing something, like... <laughs> yeah, exactly, you're like, I want to be, like, that person, right. not, like, the one Not the like crowd. all the kids in my class, I want to be, like, the guy on stage making, <laughs> like, money and... I love that like, mindset world that you have. Yeah. It's so, like, um... Like, opposite to, like, the majority. Is it? I would say so. (laughs) I think so many people have, like, that fear, you know? Like, the fear of stepping out and, like, the fear of, like, going against their parents. I mean, don't get me wrong, as teenagers, we all fight back in a way, you know? But I guess for me personally, like, I just was, like... I just felt boxed by by rules and stuff. Like, I, I didn't want to get my phone taken away. You know, like, I didn't want to risk the little bit of freedom that I did have. So I just mm. was like, all right, whatever you want. You know, my mom, like, picked out my clothes in middle school. Oh, my God, I hated that. <laughs> I hated it. I can imagine. Okay, I got teased a few times oh, because no. it's, like, how freaking annoying, you know? I was going to school with double corduroy, like, jeans and jacket no. when everyone was going to school in like denim and hoodies you know like like oh. I want to look like everyone else you know <laughs> yeah but, um, no that's I mean my parents yeah they'd they'd try I mean <laughs> <laughs> see yeah, I love that <laughs> they would be they like, tried. like oh are you sure you want to wear your pants that tight I'm like you don't get it like, <laughs> <laughs> hey at least like, they didn't make you go back upstairs and change that's no, great yeah, they were just like all right fine yeah they <laughs> I think they genuinely like tried to understand and be okay but some things just like worried them um sure my brother and sister didn't have to deal with that. They're eight and ten years younger than me, so oh, okay. after me, I feel like they got, like, the easy ride. Like, they were like, well, these kids aren't nearly as weird as he is, so. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, yeah, it's, like, I, I feel like, yeah, I just, I didn't, I didn't have much freedom from them to begin with, so I oh. think in general I just wanted freedom, so I kind of had to, like, force it like a statement like I had to make myself have freedom because not even like make a statement but it's just like anything that even if it was like um you you know going out to the backyard and smoking a cigarette or something I was like nobody nobody can tell me like nobody's gonna stop me I'm doing it right now you know um I had to find my own ways to to be free um and then I think eventually, probably by the time I was like 17, 18, they were just like, he's not, he's like not going to do what we say. <laughs> so <laughs> we're not going to ask, but you know, we're just going to like let him do his thing <laughs> as long as you don't hurt anybody. So now there's more acceptance there. For sure. Well, yeah. I mean, now that I'm an adult, they don't, you know, yeah. they don't have any even attempt at jurisdiction yeah. over my life. Exactly. But, um, That's great. And then they also, well, like my... My mom lives uh, in, like, the Laguna Beach area still. Mm-hmm. Um, and then my stepmom is on the East Coast, and my father actually passed last year. So he I'm was so the sorry. most... <laughs> he was definitely the most on board for everything that I did. Really? Yeah. Um, 
That's great. He's with you in spirit. Probably, I would, would assume so. Yeah, <laughs> especially with how things have been going lately. Um, yeah, I can't deny that that's definitely probably for sure true. Guiding you. <laughs> yeah. Because today you kind of um, transitioned just a little bit, or at least added a new aspect of yourself. You just got back from a photo shoot. Yes. <laughs> Tell me about that. Um, it was great. It was just a. It was a group shoot. Awesome. There was, um, I think, like four girls, and then me and uh, this other guy, um, and. Yeah, we went down to Black's Beach, one of the only, if not the only, clothing optional beach mm-hmm. in California. Um, maybe even, I don't think it's the only one on the West Coast. It might be. I don't know. Possibly. I mean, that's a long... It's, I just know around here that is <laughs> that's the, the spot. only spot. It's yeah. definitely the only spot. <laughs> Um, but at least in Southern California, for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. So you did some um, nude photos. Mm-hmm. So we started off um, in like trunks. It was a little cold to be in the water, but you're not allowed to care about that right. as a model. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> the whole point is you have to look comfortable all the time. At all times. Mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> Props uh, for that alone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're like getting dragged out to sea by waves, like sitting in the water and it's like 64 degrees out. Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, Chilling. Mm-hmm. A little bit. But, and yeah, no, it's it was really good. Um, the other models are awesome to work with. Every That's now neat. and then you get a weird photographer. <laughs> really? Just, yeah. You gotta weed one of them out. I mean, you invite like 10 to 20 photographers to an event where there's going to be a bunch of naked people and you can't expect them all to be professionals or artists. Like, there's going to be a, a weirdo or a creeper too, for sure. So how do you handle those ones? Like, do you just continue on with your, like, professionalism as a model? Or, like, are like how do you go about that? Do you just avoid them? Like, um, Yeah, well, it's a very open atmosphere usually, so. Right. And I mean, in general, like, if you ever... Every model can say no to whatever the fuck they're told to do. <laughs> You're allowed to say no. Um, and so there's like, it, it's usually, I mean, for the guys, we don't care. Like, it's, it, hey, uh, would you mind um, you know, picking her up? And acting like you, you just got married on the beach or something, you know, like yeah. you're on a date or something. Like, it's easy. But um, for the girls, it can obviously get a little creepier sometimes. And um, But we're, like, all friends and cool. have each other's backs and stuff. And then the people running the event are very, like, strict and they'll kick people out if they... Oh, uh, that's good. Yeah, without refunds, of course. <laughs> Love that. Yeah. As it should be. <laughs> uh, right, yeah. <laughs> um... So yeah, they're like it's it's for the most part it's fine, um, but you know I've heard of instances happening at various shoots just out there and stuff. Um, it's like a it's a tough thing for for some models, but again, as a male model, mm-hmm. I don't really have to worry about sexual harassment, especially being six four. Like, <laughs> like people don't <laughs> try to like. I was not anticipating that, to be honest. I'm like, okay, I know he's like six feet, but my goodness. <laughs> like, Hi, James. Like, oh, hey. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. But yeah, it's, um, yeah, that shoot was fun. And then like, yeah, it was like we started off um, mostly clothed. I mean, it was the beach, so nobody's fully clothed. And then um, we were playing volleyball, which I think those shots are going to be funny. Ooh. I'll be surprised if any of them look like... <laughs> If any of them look, like, actually good. The photographers are great, but, like, we're, like, goofing off playing yeah. volleyball, and none of us are good at volleyball, so it's, like... <laughs> A bunch of models playing volleyball. <laughs> that aren't good at it, and, like, yeah. Um, so, oh, hopefully, fun. those will probably be fun, but, um, yeah, we'll do, like, dramatic ones, solo, just, like, one-on-one shots. There was this Austrian woman who loved me. She shot, like, a million of me, so... Ooh. That's gonna be, do they yeah. they come back to you, right? They're supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> There's no guarantee okay. because you know these are just random individuals showing up to an event they paid for. Wow. You don't you know they're supposed to do certain things, but. Wow. So there's so much mystery behind it too. 
Yeah, yeah. Sometimes, I mean, sometimes they'll come up. You know, they'll. Yeah, I mean, they get everyone's email address and Instagram mm-hmm. and name, so they can send the pictures out. Uh, right. They know that they're supposed to. They know that if they use one of the pictures for their purposes, that they also mm-hmm. have to send it to us for us to use. Okay, great. Um, but you know, whether or not they do is kind of up to the photographer. Doesn't always happen. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Um, you recently did an amazing photo shoot. The the I pink loved. and blue one. Yes. Yes. Dude. That one was great. I I was just in a. I really wanted to be paid for that one. But I agreed to do it for a trade shoot just because I had just cut my hair off and I kept getting offers for things. And I was like, just so you know, I don't look anything like any of my pictures anymore. Uh, I recently put on, or not 100 pounds, I put on 25 pounds and cut all my hair off. And they're like, oh, well, then what do you look like now? And I'm like, I can take a phone picture. Like, uh. So I was like, I need to get another shoot out of the way. That's like what I look like now. Right. Um, and so I didn't really know what to expect too much from this guy but once I like got there and I saw like the lighting setup that he had in there and everything I was like this is you were excited. Be... yeah I was like this is gonna be cool dude just the lighting alone I know, I know. is amazing like, it's like a Drake a, music video or something a photo of the corner of the wall <laughs> it would have been so pretty yeah and then we've got your intricate chiseled body yeah. I mean <laughs> just, my goodness just uh Vogue and out literally I tagged GQ <laughs> I'm like this yeah. is amazing <laughs> <laughs> thank you yeah props yeah. for being able to like share that part of yourself you know not everybody can do that again right that's another thing I've, re- I've you know what I've realized honestly is just that like throughout doing more and more shoots because that was actually my first nude shoot um, in the past when I have done just like fashion shoots or clothing shoots and stuff mm-hmm. I'll be out somewhere on like a city street or a hiking trail where people are all around mm-hmm. and have to do like three or four outfit changes <laughs> so I'm used Gosh. to just like stripping down to my briefs at least in front of yeah. random strangers I usually mm-hmm. walk around my house in my briefs like right. I, I'm like you know I'm and nobody ever has a problem <laughs> with <laughs> <laughs> everyone's like he's fine like, yeah it's he's okay. a free spirit it's okay yeah yeah so um because of that it's just yeah it's kind of easy especially if someone's like this will look great take off all your clothes and stand like this like i'm like probably right like they're probably right it's fine yeah you know it helps you with um having done it i guess to any extent or being used to like other people appreciating your body or like uh, specifically requesting to photograph it because they think that it's like it represents some sort of um, ideal and, mm-hmm. and, and my hope inspires other people to see what they can achieve for themselves Absolutely. Um, then it's like yeah sweet I can, I'll do that I can trust that that's good I'm not gonna like yeah. see it and be like oh I look weird like you know <laughs> it's hard to you be self conscious when the yeah. person that took it is like taking it in the first place right they're inspired by it so. yeah how was it for your first time was that shoot your first time stripping down completely mm, yeah so how how was that in the first moment like because it's something new and it's honestly the horrible. only thing that i was like i was like when i'm not shooting am i supposed to like cover up or, you know right, i was like yeah. is it weird if i'm just walking around naked right. but but it wasn't yeah. <laughs> cool. um because like <laughs> I, like, I realized very quick, though, that it wasn't, and then, obviously, since doing, like, this shoot and, mm-hmm. um, the last one, like, it, uh, I just realized, like, it, like, that's, like, you're, that's literally why you're here. Nice. Okay. Yeah. As a producer, I, when I, someone comes into my studio and they're trying to sing and, um, they're worried about my roommates hearing them sing, mm-hmm. I'm, like if you don't want anyone to hear you, then why are we recording your voice? Why are you here? Why are you in my <laughs> recording studio <laughs> if you don't want anyone to hear you? Yeah, that kind of defeats um, the purpose. Right. So if someone okay. is like, hey, can you please come over here and pose nude? Mm-hmm. It doesn't make sense to be worried that someone will be offended by seeing you nude. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. Um, I like that. So, like, that environment kind of supports, you know, what you're doing in general. So mm-hmm. there should be no, um, you know, self-consciousness or nervousness. I also get showered, no, drowned in... <laughs> 
almost backhanded compliments, <laughs> but not backhanded compliments, more like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a, like a compliment out of some sort of envy, maybe a little jealousy, right? From uh, roommates, other guys, um, interesting. how girls I've been with, you know, they'll, some <laughs> they're shade. just like, wow, like your body's great. You know, the more you hear it, the less you're worried about people seeing it. Um, I think, and yeah. um, and I think that with like all this body positivity that's um, kind of popular lately, mm-hmm. um, that maybe more and more people will start hearing that enough to feel so confident in themselves that I mean they don't have to be like posing nude, but just to feel like good about anything. Exactly. Um, yeah. My my roommate, one of my roommates, was inspired by um, <laughs> me <laughs> um, to to start like working out more and eating healthier and stuff and um he's seen crazy results uh difference in in how he looks and then it, it directly translates to how he feels about himself in general That's great. um the way he looked like there's certain clothes that like he really liked the clothes but he just didn't want to wear them because he felt like he looked bad in them and now he's like oh this looks great on me now you know that's awesome um, and it started with your comfort <laughs> with zone. me making him upset but <laughs> We, yeah. <laughs> I would he was like he's like if I <laughs> he's like some people bum themselves out scrolling through Instagram and looking at all the people they think are better than them but I just wake up in the morning and Chase walks in <laughs> with a six pack on. <laughs> like this is what I am walking into in the bathroom <laughs> yeah, he's every like, morning all I see every day is <laughs> this guy just standing here so he's like it's like constantly in my face yeah, like, it's like <laughs> I gotta get it together man <laughs> yeah he's like I'm not I can't just sit here like pounding carne asada fries at one in the morning every night yeah while he's in here with a six-pack like you know and um that's great because you're spreading positivity right because i would never be like hey you gotta cut it out on those like it's like everyone do what they want but if you want like i I, i'm sure he wanted to have a different physique and so like eventually he just decided to do it just like i did I was the opposite. I was extremely skinny, but still. Right. We all have our own challenges. Like, let's let's talk about that for a second, because it's like I'm pretty thin too, and like I feel like when some people are talking about body positivity, they just expect someone who's skinny to like have no complaints, <laughs> and it's like okay, well that's not you know the truth. Like we have our own kind of like. Do you not? You think you're too skinny? Um, I think I can get too skinny. Like, mm. I have sometimes have to, like, consciously eat or be aware of, like, the protein I intake. Um, Interesting. Yeah, a lot of that is focused around, like, my stress levels. Or, like, um, like when I'm depressed, I'll, I won't eat. I'm the opposite. I don't eat. Yeah. And so, um, I, yeah, I got pretty, pretty thin, like, a few years ago. There's just a lot going on in my life at the time. And I was really skinny yeah you know and i look back at photos and i'm like my goodness like i knew that i was too skinny but i didn't realize that i was that skinny like i was in a size zero and that was like baggy on me Uh. and um in the time i wasn't i didn't feel comfortable you know i didn't feel comfortable in my skin and um i think that that is like a really big thing like for you you're saying like it was the opposite like instead of losing like you probably you had to gain muscle and it's the same exact thing for me like my way of um, being positive about my body is like you know getting the right protein like you know um, doing like yoga and stuff just something for um, the benefit of my muscles you know because that's that's what I'm more dependent on Mm -hmm. um, personally for me but it's it's very real you know like just because um, you have some extra pounds doesn't mean that the person who is you know extra thin isn't feeling the same as you Exactly, yeah. I mean, there's, like, this, um, I guess medically, they're kind of, <laughs> health-wise, there is, like, kind of an ideal sure. physique, right? Mm-hmm. But um, it's really just, you know, any any step away from that, regardless of which direction, it could, you know, the further and further you are from that, the, um, well, the worse you can feel just internally, if, you, if it is that you're, like, eating unhealthy or you just have Absolutely. poor health, but then also, like... 
yeah, you you know, you're gonna walk through a mall and see an ad and be like, oh, I don't look like that guy. And a lot of people will say it's just his genetics. It's like, you know, right. he's blessed with no genetics, Photoshop. I hear the that. The dude doesn't eat fast food and he goes yeah. to the gym five times a week. You it's know, so true. But um, but I think with like yeah, like you were saying, you're like super skinny. Like I I think I first realized I um I have this friend who's, like, a, a super fit, like, fitness, like, yoga instructor, like, cool. workout babe chick, mm-hmm. um, and I, I, like, took her out one time, um, and we're, like, walking along, and, like, I realized, like, this tiny girl, she's gotta be, like, your height, and I'm like, this tiny girl looks yoked, like, she's straight Dang. jacked, Dang. and then I'm, like, <laughs> I look like I'm 13. <laughs> You're fisting, I'm like You're just feel, like standing there. I feel like there. I'm taking my mom out on a date. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh my god, that's great. Everyone's gonna be like, oh, it's like. <laughs> that's fantastic. <laughs> it's a little past his bedtime. Like you know, like I, I was like, you know, so I felt like I was just like maybe like I'll try to be like adult sized. Like <laughs> that's it. Like that's my goal. I'm just yeah. like I was 135. Okay. And um, I feel like a lot of Girl, like average, like normal weight women mm-hmm. your size mm-hmm. are one thirty five. Yeah, but see, I'm, like I'm twice as tall as you. Oh yeah. So I was like, oh my goodness, non-existent. <laughs> wow. Yeah. But like, you and felt okay too. Like internally, again. like you felt okay. It's just, it was just like your genetics. I guess, like I would just eat when I was hungry, mm-hmm. and. I never worked out. Yeah. I drank a lot. Mm. So I stopped drinking and started eating, like forcing myself to eat more and then just working out all the time. Cool. Like, <laughs> just completely. Yeah. Is that kind of what got you into the modeling or what? how did that whole, how so, did that even start? Well, I've casually been doing it since like high school. Like if okay. just friends are like, Hey, Chase is tall and skinny, like, <laughs> you know, throw some, this, this t-shirt that I just made for this clothing brand I'm trying to start, you know? That's great. Um, like, we'll just shoot him in this, and it wasn't, like, ever paid, I'd, it was just like, hey, can I take some pictures? Yeah. Or, or for music, like, I wanted to have, like, professional-looking photos to go with my music pages, like, back in the day of, like, MySpace, like, I would always put my songs on MySpace, or now uh, SoundCloud or, or yeah. Spotify, anything, you want to have, like, professional-looking uh, shots, so I would start doing shots like that, and then when people would see them, they're like, they don't really know that they had anything to do with music, they were just like, oh, you're, you're a model, obviously, <laughs> you're super tall and skinny, and then I just always had it, like, okay, tall plus skinny, mm-hmm. plus jawline, I guess. The Equals, jawline is the money shot, jawline is, I've heard. Uh, yeah, no, People people make very funny comments about it sometimes. Really? It's like a thing. It's like, man, you're, like, your jawline's sharper than my future. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say to that? <laughs> I get crazy Sorry. compliments. That's what I mean. Like, people say these compliments and I don't even know. Like, I'm like, thanks. Like, or they'll shit on themselves in my, like, right. <laughs> about me. And I'm like, stop. <laughs> like, don't. No. <laughs> Um, that's great yeah so but yeah so I guess like I just always thought like okay great I'm model-esque awesome um and then I've gotten some shoots and some people are like yeah this is good this is good um but you can see like the difference even just from like earlier this year when I was drinking really heavily which Mm -hmm. it undoubtedly had a lot to do with um not only the fact that everyone kind of was during covid during, yeah, and absolutely. lockdown and stuff but then also uh my father passing mm. i think just both of it together just made me like a super alcoholic and i just felt like i'm still skinny and like look yeah. pretty good You're like so this is okay mm-hmm. because but yeah. now i look back at my old pictures compared to like my current pictures and yeah. i'm like who even is that other guy wow he looks like an old lady he looks like someone's aunt wow <laughs> Someone's like old auntie with like yeah my hair's like really long and it's like kind of like puffy and I look all like tired and just like old and like mm. you know, um, and like in May I stopped drinking, started working out, Good for eating you. a lot more deliberately and just more in general. What? Um, and now the modeling gigs are picking up. 
see that. So it was like I already was getting some, but now people are like, wait, you're not already modeling for Louis Vuitton? Why not? Like honestly, <laughs> that last photo could have been like in a magazine. I'm not kidding. That Did you know? Crazy. I just found this out this week, but apparently Louis Vuitton won't hire. They won't have anyone model for them that's over a 30 waist or or shorter than 6'2". And most people are like, what does that even look like? But I'm a 28 <laughs> waist and I'm 6'4". So. Whoa. Oh, my <laughs> so goodness. So I need to go to Italy right now. I'm yes, sorry. I have to leave. But no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. But I am trying to, like, kind of make my way out there, at least <laughs> periodically. To Yeah, because, like... Fitting fitting that criteria is not um, a challenge for you. There you could, were literally born this way. Right, that's know? just yeah, what I'm like. So what a blessing, dude. Dang. I feel like there can't be too many runners up in that specific category, no, right? No. Not too many. <laughs> you need to jump on that, and I yeah. love how like stopping the alcoholism um, really helped create alignment for your life like this yeah. like path that you're on like would you say you would be right here right now like absolutely not with the drinking that no. you were doing no. Wow. <laughs> no no way no i was waking up i would wake up at like eight because i just wake up with like not almost with the sun like once the sun's been up for a second i can't really sleep anymore so i would wake up at like eight be like oh no the jack is empty go to the liquor store get a bottle try to fight off a hangover by drinking Drinking. in the morning and then I just go clear on until like three in the morning pass out wake up again oh no I'm about to have a hangover Jack's gone go to the liquor store it was like this routine and it was just constant I was still doing photo shoots and stuff in between producing music they weren't as good of photos but you know I was still doing everything that I'm doing so you're functioning still yes nobody even knew that I was drinking so much until I moved in with my my roommates now and and they were like, you literally always have a, a drink in your hand. Like, I never, you, I never see you not drinking, wow. but you act normal all the time. Wow. Um, yeah, no, best kept secret. Like nobody knew that I was a huge alcoholic. So, did it take your friends, um, like saying something? Did it take someone that loves you or that you love having to tell you, like we're noticing this, or like, no. okay, so you, that didn't matter to you? It took um, me loving myself. I feel like. It took me, um, well, I, I ended a relationship that was really stressing me out. Okay. And then that lessened stress led to me, like, drinking, or it's just, I stopped drinking entirely. Wow. And then because I wasn't waking up trying to fight off a hangover with a bottle of Jack anymore, I instead was like, well, might as well work out. I've got, like, the energy. Wow. I'm not hungover. So I'll just start working out. And then I started working out and I started seeing results. So I started getting more addicted to to working out than, um, or just like health and, and being uh, fit and healthy and stuff in general. So like, Much more than I was ever with drinking. Okay. And that led to, I guess, just a lot of people like kind of, taking notice and more people instead of being like you know oh you you should be a model you could be a model people being like like let's get you in front of people like more more and more people wanting to shoot and um wow. me just being more alert and more like my friends being like yeah you look a lot more like like awake <laughs> like, Present, like yeah. You're here. yeah <laughs> wow. yeah um so definitely a big big that was like i think it like i just decided like that there were things in my life that, like, weren't really serving me, weren't really doing uh, anything but taking up time Mm -hmm. of mine or taking up my energy, um, and that I was dedicating too much of myself to too many other people. Um, So there wasn't really much left over for me to take care of myself with. So once I kind of made it about, like, I'm in a relationship with myself, like, all I need to worry about is making myself as best I can. And, um, you know, I, I guess when I just started focusing on that mm-hmm. is when things started getting um, better. Wow. Yeah. That's very powerful. <laughs> yeah. That just shows. It's like, very real because you hear people say stuff like that. But, like, I, I literally just did. I was, like, I'm not, like, focused on making anyone else happy. 
like you know if I, if I can make someone else happy great but exactly. that's not my like purpose uh, or it's not like the center of my existence right now it's gonna be like just taking care of myself because Absolutely. I haven't been and nobody else is so yep. um, and then what happens is the people who do support who you are and what you're doing start to fall be there, yeah. into your circle or show up yeah or show up <laughs> yeah and um that takes a lot of strength to be able to let go of people that you love, you admire, you know, toxicity aside, like, you know, we form connections and, you know, we learn things about ourselves through those failed relationships, you know? Yeah. And um, I think that that's um, something that, again, a lot of people can't say. People stay, you know, people stay in things yeah. and uh, they <laughs> don't get to align with themselves because you know that person or that group of people is not meant for your alignment like you gotta sometimes you gotta steer in the other direction you know and you can still love that person regardless but. yeah i see that a lot and and i think i was kind of that guy that like would <laughs> would always tell people dude you like you don't need to be in that relationship like you know right um you know if you're if your man's mistreating you like you know leave him if you're if your girlfriend's giving you that much grief like just yeah. you know you can end it you're not locked into this forever no one's forcing you to to be there you're just Mm -hmm. you're just putting up with it you're just doing it um but then i'd 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 also be that guy (laughs) like i just didn't realize that i needed to leave right Um, preaching to the choir nobody was telling me that i don't think wow Uh, but i i would tell people that i'd be like yo (laughs) get rid of that person yeah (laughs) but um but nobody would tell me like hey i feel like this is affecting you negatively so you um, kind of form those ideas for yourself? Sometimes they'd be like, I think you can do better, but I thought they were being okay. shallow. Oh, so you're thinking more on the physical right. aspect. Right, and sometimes they were, and I'd be like, <laughs> hmm. like you don't know me, but... Um, Dude, that stuff doesn't even matter, no. to be honest. Uh, yeah, like, I can think anyone's super, me. super attractive and not want anything to do with them, right. or I could like not really look at someone twice but they say something or we have an interaction that makes me like hang on now who's this like yeah absolutely (laughs) it's all about like vibe connection energy right and um yeah so i don't know when whenever they would say that i was kind of just like you don't get it like you're not (laughs) yeah but uh but then i finally came to the conclusion that it wasn't good for me and my own luckily I, I really don't know how um well maybe would, you had your your angel whispering in your ear you know maybe yeah. i'd like to be able to say like here's how you do it like but i can't <laughs> yeah. like it just i just one day was like oh i'm gonna do this i'm gonna live my life for myself and good the people that are supposed to be there you know be a part and be there too um and it's yeah it's been working out pretty well so far i can i can see that (laughs) absolutely i just feel like um you're vibrating at such a high level just by being authentic like you're so i feel like you're your best right now i mean i've I've only been following you, and we've been, like, distant friends, like, Only IG for, friends. like, three years For, or like, something. three years now, yeah. It but really has been, like, three years. It has been. Like, I feel like we're, like, you're my friend, you know? Yeah, no, like, totally. Literally. Like, I was, like, they're, like, I was telling someone I was doing, like, going to do a podcast, and they're, like, oh, with who? And I was, like, this friend of mine. Like, I've never met her, but, like, we're friends. <laughs> totally, <laughs> like, totally. Okay. I almost went to one of your shows, too. I remember you invited me, and I was supposed to, oh, but, yeah. you know. Which one was that? Was, I don't remember. Was it OC Fair? Pa- yes, it was, was it OC, OC Fair? Fair. Yes, it was. Don't, don't feel bad. We sucked. <laughs> we played so bad. Oh, no. It was not. <laughs> were you drinking? Okay. <laughs> well, first of all, yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. But second of all, I mean, I always used to. We play sure. great, but... Sure. Um, <laughs> No, we were supposed to, our set was like 30 minutes long, and mm-hmm. we were supposed to, and we were used to playing at most like a 45 minute long set, um, but we were supposed to play an hour, and we were like, and you can't stop, like, you can stop for like a couple of seconds, but you, like, you gotta keep going with the music, yeah, no like, like stalling for time. And then go. And, <laughs> right. So, wow. we started running out of songs, and I was like... <laughs> And uh, one of the songs I wasn't playing guitar for, so I was just dancing around singing and stuff. Cool. And then I was like, uh, I guess somewhere in that song, my guitar got knocked over. Oh, 
Um, so it went out of tune. And I didn't notice. And then um, I was like, okay, to stall for time, you guys, like, go backstage. I'm just going to play some acoustic songs out here, kill some time, and then we'll pick back up with the band finish, like, you know, oh hardcore. And they were like, oh, great. So. On stage, this is all happening. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I go to grab my guitar, and okay, then I'm like, I don't want to stall and, like, start tuning or whatever, like, yeah. because he doesn't want us to stop. Yeah. So... <laughs> So I just play, and I was expecting it to be fine. I play, like, a chord, and I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> it sounds like oh. it was completely out of... So, like, I'm sitting there, like, trying to, like, start playing the song while, like, also tuning a little bit, and I'm and I'm not doing well. And I'm, like, trying to play the song. Um, was the crowd still, like, vibing, or did they think, like, this is part of the show? <laughs> I don't know. Like, I, and, <laughs> I mean, there's a chance that some of them didn't really notice. That yeah. anything was, you know, but um, but the sound guy or the, the the guy that was booking us definitely ran backstage after like my second attempt to do a song, like whatever the second song I was doing, he like ran back there halfway through and he's like, he's dying out there. You guys gotta go back again. Oh my god! <laughs> so they ran back on stage, and uh, we played like the uh, last three songs, and then um, <laughs> I think we were done with that. And then yeah, I, was, I remember leaving and being like. So, I did pretty good today, right? And, like, my band were just, like, shut up. <laughs> like, you gotta laugh up. it off, right? Yeah, because yeah, that's all you can do. Oh, that echoes whenever I touch this. It's okay, I know. I gotta fix that <laughs> somehow. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it, yeah you, all you can do is smile at the circumstance. Absolutely. <laughs> well, I would love to go see your show or your band when you're playing, so please let me know when you find a name. Right? Yeah, and even first like, first. we're so electronic now too, I don't even know how a show would That's work. cool. It might be cool. Yeah, yeah. I'm in another band too. You are? That does have a name. Okay. Um, I play bass and do backup vocals okay, cool. in that one. It's called Coast Red. Uh, we just played Coast a show, Red. um, our first show in like two years on, like, uh, it was like the weekend before Halloween, I think. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, that, yeah, that, that band's really fun, and we might play a show again soon. Very cool. So you and... Yes. And you. <laughs> the audience <laughs> out <see>. here. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, yes, um, we definitely will. So for all of my listeners, how can they find you? If they'd like to reconnect, check out your music, maybe do a shoot with you, for you. The best place to find me is Instagram. Because I'm always on Instagram. <laughs> if I'm not, I might not answer my calls. I might miss some texts. Email, I try to check really frequently. But, like, Instagram. If you just look at my Instagram, you probably know what I'm doing or where I am. And if not, then I don't want you to know. <laughs> <laughs> His story will be hidden if you don't see anything on there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but, yeah, Instagram, it's at... McLeod dot X. That's M A C L E O D dot X. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I am going to tag his handle in the description box below. And McLeod, thank you so much for being here with me today. Thank you. I appreciate you. Um, Likewise. I'm very grateful for you. I'm, I'm very, very grateful that I even met you. You know, that's the beauty of the internet, of right. social media. Yeah, like... Just... The beauty of Instagram couples. <laughs> it all started somewhere. That's great. <laughs> Look what came out of it. <laughs> Straight up, yeah. You gained a friend, so... <laughs> right. That's very cool. And um, just keep going with your endeavors, you know? Be true to yourself. Definitely. It's It comes naturally, but just keep going, you know? Do your thing. The right people will fall into place. Definitely. So... Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Alrighty, until next time. Thank you for being with me today. If you felt this in your heart, in your soul, in your center, then please subscribe for more soulful messages. And most importantly, be somebody's angel today and share this episode. Until next time, Angelians. Peace and love. <laughs>